Fantastic. Well, uh, we'll take a walk through the Salford team and, and discuss them a little bit more, but we've got a very special guest to join us for that. So I believe we have Gary Neville ready to join us. Gary, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Gary. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this afternoon. Uh, I mean, firstly, you know, it's been a very strange season and uh, especially for Salford with the managerial changes early on. But how, how have you found it? I think we've been stop start. I think obviously when you change a manager like we did after five games, you expect there's going to be a little bit of settling in period. Skulls obviously took the team for a few weeks. But I just got the feeling you just mentioned there that we've kept a settled team uh, the last three games. One change to the Ashley Hunter suspended and Luke Burgess comes in. So I suspect that Asante will play on the left and Luke Burgess will go to the right, uh, unless Richie surprises me. But it looks like we've got a little bit of consistency. We actually, we thought we'd be a lot more um, we thought it would be higher goal scoring this season, but it's turned out the other way. We've Defensively, we've been absolutely outstanding and we're just struggling to score goals a little bit. And uh, of course, we remember playing uh, um, Salford a fair bit from our time in the in the National League. Um, what, what, what teams have really surprised you since being in League Two and who have you found a threat this season? Um, the best team I've seen, I've watched every single minute of every Salford game. The best team I've seen, even though we drew with them at home, was Cheltenham. Uh, I just felt we were really lucky to get a point out of that game. It was only two or three weeks ago. Uh, there have been some other good teams as well, but they, for me, were head and shoulders above any team that I've seen. Newport were good, Cambridge were good, uh, Forest Green were really attacking, but I just felt that Cheltenham felt like a really good team, both in attack and defence. Um, they're the best team I've seen so far, but like you say, we've... We've had some good encounters against Leighton or you were better than us uh, in the National League, there's no doubt in that season and uh, we were grateful to get up off you, on your coattails in the playoffs. Yeah, that, that was a fantastic season. I was going to ask if you had any memories that stuck out for you. We obviously had the opening day there, that 1-1 draw, but is there anything that sticks in your mind from that season, that battle between us two? We played well, I think, away, if I remember rightly. I think we won, didn't we? Um, yes, yeah, you played very well. It was a little bit... It, <laughs> I remember uh, watching the game. I think we remember a cross going in. I think Rory Gaffney scored. Um, I remember us playing really well and thinking, right, here we go. But you were far more consistent than us that season. You, you know, you, you didn't really put a foot wrong. You had a little bit of a wobble towards the end, if I remember rightly. But you got over the line and you were better than us over the period of the season. And um, we were... We were disappointed, obviously, not to win the league, but when you know you're not the best team, we didn't even finish second in the end. I think Solly will finish second. And like I say, we just played really well in the playoffs against Fylde in the final. But there were big games. That first game, I was away from home. I was actually on holiday that first game that we played against you. And we realised how difficult it would be that season because you were you know, obviously very good. And last season in League Two, um, it caught, I don't know what it felt like for yourselves, but for us, it caught us completely by surprise. It was... We were led to believe and we felt that the standard between National League and League Two wasn't as big as it was. But last season with Crewe, Swindon, Plymouth, um, uh, Exeter, there were a few really good sides and we found it really tough in League Two last season. It certainly is a, it's a tough league and it's, it's tough this season as well and it's very tight in and around the playoffs. Obviously, it's a lot is made of Salford and your ambition, but how, what are your expectations for this season moving forward into the second half? We're in, if you look at us, we've got, I think, a game or two games in hand on certain teams. I think we've got a big 10 days coming up. We've got uh, yourselves away today, which is tough. and You can go level on points with us. Uh, we've got Mansfield away, which I think is one of our games in hand on Tuesday. We've got Colchester at home next Saturday. And then on the Tuesday, we've got our other game in hand, which is on, on certain teams, which is against Scunthorpe away. So we've got three away games now out of four. One home game against Colchester, which is tough. I think it's a big 10 days for us. I think a lot in terms of what happens for us and, uh, and where our aspirations lie will be determined in this next couple of weeks because if we can get two or three wins, then we'll be in a great position. But, you know, in this league, you can lose two or three. You can be down in 15 as much as you can be up in third. Absolutely. And uh, let's let's turn our attention to this afternoon's game and, and uh, run through your Salford side. Um, so we should be getting the teams up on screen. We have Victor Hladke, Ibu Torre. Jason Lowe, Ash Eastham, Tom Clark, who's an ex-Orient player, uh, Deshaun Bernard, Luke Burgess, Oscar Thurkeld, James Wilson, Brandon Thomas Asante and Ian Henderson. So um, f from your point of view, Gary, who are, who are the danger men to look out for in that side? To get a chance is James Wilson. 
uh, the best finisher in the club by a mile. Ian Henderson's also someone who scored goals in League One consistently for the last few years. But Wilson's the one that I think in and around the penalty spot, six yard box, if he gets the ball played into him, he very rarely misses the target and quite often scores. Uh, Henderson is experienced, but he plays a little bit deeper. I think you just said McInnes playing, and I think he's at the base of a three. So I, I, Ian Henderson, I've no doubt, will drop back onto him. And that's what he's been doing the last few weeks, dropping back in onto the holding midfield player. And then you'll have Asante and Burgess White, who are exciting, they're young, um, unpredictable, can be good in one moment and a little bit inconsistent in the next, but they're exciting as well. And that's what you get with young players. And then the back seven, we've got two real defensive players in midfield, uh, Oscar and Jason. And then we've got a back four and goalkeeper who've been really good this last month. Our goalkeeper has been one of our best probably ever signings, Vakaf Lackley. Lackley. Uh, he's absolutely been outstanding for us. I hope he can continue today. I'm sure you're hoping he's not, but uh, <laughs> seven, this, the, back, the back seven are solid. Um, the front two have got goals in them and the, the wide two are unpredictable. But like I say, in, in this, I never know what to expect in this league. I never know what to expect from game to game. You just don't know what's going to happen. And, and in terms of what to expect from your silver side, you've already spoken through kind of the strength of some of the players there, but in, in, in the gameplay, what, what can the Orient defence expect to kind of have to put up with? There'll be good movement uh, from Wilson. Uh, there'll be good movement from uh, Henderson in the box, particularly if we can get into wide areas. He's clever, he gets across people. You know, get a little glance in headers. Asante is... Um, He's a box of tricks. He's someone who can go and beat a man. He can go and sort of drive at you in the box. He's playing, I think he'd be playing on the left today. He's been playing on the right and Ashley Hunter's been playing on the left. But with Ash uh, suspended, then I suspect Luke Burgess will go on the right. He's left-footed. He scored a wonderful goal last week. Um, our, our, four strike, our four forwards are all capable one-on-one -on -one, uh, and good in and around the box. Um, the rest of the team are very solid, dependable, experienced. Um, and hopefully will provide a spine for us and, and you know, a good solid base. But the, the defenders for uh, Leighton Orient, I think they just have to be have to be careful in around the box because if they can give space to Wilson in particular, I think you know he, he has he has got a brilliant finish on him. Well, hopefully we are able to keep Wilson quiet. Um, I'm glad you picked up on Ian Henderson, who's 35, of course, and Joby McEnough, 39. We did have a question on social media if uh, if, if those ages uh, tempted you to get your boots back on for Salford. <laughs> not at all. Um, I actually, believe it or not, today is 10 years to the day that I went in to see Sir Alex Ferguson to tell him I wanted to retire. Having played a game yesterday, 10 years ago at West Brom away, which I was just terrible in. And even though it's 10 years ago, it's still very in the forefront of my memory how bad I was. And even when I watch the League Two games and I see the fitness of the lads, uh, no, I wouldn't do it. So take my hats off to McEnough, to Henderson. Gigs he played till he was 40. They're, they're extremely fit. Well done to them, but it, it wasn't for me. No, I don't blame you. <laughs> and uh, if I had to push you for prediction today, Gary, which, which way do you think it will go? Uh, just something, you're a, you're a fool if you predict what's going to happen in League Two. Um, I'm always hopeful. I, you know, I sit here, it's the most nervous I get every single week. Um, if I'm not at the away games, I go to every game I possibly can. Uh, I was going to come down today, but I ended up staying back to the United game last night. Uh, honestly, out of the two games, three games this week, I'd take five points, six points. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't look at it and think that it's going to be uh, ever going to be an easy game. I'd, we'll do well to come out of late in Orient. I think you've lost one game at home all season, haven't you? Um, so you've got a good home record and I'll, I'd, I'd probably take a point now if you, if you handed it to me. Well, it's two games we've lost at home and hopefully it stays that way this oh. afternoon. <laughs> but thank you oh. so much for joining well, us. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us, Gary. And, all, uh, the all the best. All, all the best. See you soon. Thank you. So 